cardiovascular support with Quantum Nutrition Lab's Quantum Garlic Complex, featuring bear garlic and allicin. Buy two bottles and get the third one free. Call 800-370-3447 or visit online at qnlabs.com. Listen to Helpline daily at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on CRN. You can try fighting the law all you want, but the law is always going to win. From politicians and celebrities to sports figures and business leaders, they're fighting the law. Now here to sort out the nation's top legal news stories is America's favorite legal analyst, Royal Oaks. This is the Royal Oaks Show. Welcome to the Royal Oak Show, and uh, gosh, Engineer Jose, didn't we decide uh, Mike Horn make, uh, made a mistake last week when he said uh, the law's always going to win? Did, didn't we cite the case of O.J. Simpson? Uh, I, maybe you could just talk to Mike uh, about that in the introduction. There's always an exception, I guess. Yeah, that's probably it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the program. In addition to Engineer Mike, we have a special co-host today by the name of Connor Oaks of the law firm of Nemesek and Cole here in Los Angeles. Connor, how are you? I'm doing very well. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm glad you're here. And ladies and gentlemen, perhaps full disclosure, uh, Connor is my son. And uh, he's no stranger to radio, though. Uh, you uh, had quite a star turn as an intern for KBC uh, Radio a few years ago. Would you like to uh, explain to the folks uh, really what your qualifications are to be here today? I really turned that place around. I would say um, the Doug McIntyre show uh, was, I, I would say, like a Titanic and iceberg sort of situation until I showed up and buoyed it. Excellent. Yeah, with my uh, topic well, selection. I know, Doug, he's not used to booze. So <laughs> so it's it must have been interesting that you buoyed it. So uh, Connor went to USC Law School, and uh, the reason I mention that is because uh, we're going to talk about Donald Trump. We're going to talk about the whole, gee, uh, should presidents be uh, hard or soft on Nazis and so on on and we're going to talk about the whole statue controversy but before we get into the racial angle of the statue controversy because you went to usc law school i do want to get your take connor on the um, the statue situation there on campus this week there's quite a controversy the kids over at ucla were having a little bit of fun with it so it, it, folks if you haven't heard about this situation everybody's talking about robert e lee statues and so on but it USC, they're putting up a big statue with a, a huge Shakespeare quote, and they have this old-timey quote fr from Shakespeare. And, and some some brilliant uh, folks at SC felt, well, we should have an old-timey approach to Shakespeare's name, and so they spelled it without the E at the end. So I guess it's S-H-A-K-E-S-P-E-A-R, and then nothing. No E at the end. Now, if you go on Wikipedia and the Internet and so on, I think 999 times out of 1,000, you're going to see that little E at the end of Shakespeare's I would name. say that it's standard. That doesn't mean that yeah. it's correct. Right. I, I'm not making any judgment. It's just that when, well, I'll change it to 99,999 out of you know uh, 100,000. That's how many times you'd see it with the E. So yeah. let's not make a judgment and say it's, it's right or wrong. But don't you think, Connor, representative of the USC community, don't you think maybe it might have been better judgment to add the E at the end of the Shakespeare name to prevent UCLA folks chuckling and, and also the oh, no, world no, no, no. for the next 89 years as they pass by the statue it's wondering, Mabel, didn't I misspell the name Shakespeare? <laughs> no, it's the long con. See, we spell it the technically correct way, and yeah. then when everyone rushes to correct us, we get to look even smarter when we whip out the aged yellow document that shows that back in the day it was really truly yeah. spelled with no E at and the it, end. That may be right. That may be the right way. But you know where I come down on it? I think better judgment on the part of USC would have been to say, if we spell it the correct way but without the E, people are going to think we're idiots for the next several hundred years as they look at the statue. That's just how I feel. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to talk about different statues, a huge controversy here in this country on the Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Credit cards are sure fun to use, perhaps a little addicting, and they kind of make you feel rich. 
Well, if you're like most Americans, you've got over five maxed out credit cards in your pocket right now, and you can barely make the minimum payments, right? I'd like to personally recommend a company called DebtHelper.com. DebtHelper.com is a licensed and insured nonprofit debt management agency. They can help cut your interest rates by as much as 50% and lower your monthly payments, saving you thousands of dollars in finance charges on your credit card bills. DebtHelper.com does not lend money. DebtHelper's program could have you paying off your credit card debt in full in a three to five year period. Call DebtHelper.com right now for your free confidential consultation today. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show, and gosh, we had Ken Jeffries in uh, News Dude last week, Connor, and uh, we played a little, you know, trivia contest to deal. We, we uh, tried to find out how much of a musicologist he was. So mm. uh, here you mm. are. You're the co-host this week, so we got to inflict the same thing on you. Uh, do you have any idea who that uh, group was? We were just uh, listening to. Oh, very good. Oh, come good. on. Okay. Okay. Is that- a bonus question, bonus yeah. question. The lead singer of Queen uh, tragically Mercury. departed. You didn't even let me get the hey, description out. What do you want to say? Yeah, well, see, I'm glad you know that. Not everybody Did would Ken know that. Did Ken not know that? Ken knew everything except, actually, we tripped him up on one Queen song, and maybe we'll hear it uh, later. Uh, Engineer Jose, you never know what he's going to play. Know. But there is a different Queen song, actually. It's uh, Don't Stop Me Now. Sure. And so uh, Ken, you know, being a... Uh, a disc jockey from the 70s and 80s, he, you know, this is a little too recent for him. So, ladies and gentlemen, we were going to uh, start talking about the, uh, the, the statue issue concerning Trump and, and the Confederate stuff. But actually, off air, Connor and I were talking about a little postscript. So here's the deal. Uh, we were just chatting about the fact that USC has put up a statue and they have a, a quote from Shakespeare. And at the end of it, they give Shakespeare's name, but they leave the E off of Shakespeare's name. And so... For my money, that's going to cause all sorts of guffaws and uh, and ridicule by not just UCLA people, but the rest of the known world. And but we were saying uh, there, there was a solution. Why not an asterisk at the end of the name Shakespeare, and then at the bottom of the statue, U- USC could have put something along the lines of, "By the way, in case you think we're stupid, we know a lot of people nowadays spell Shakespeare with an e at the end, but yes. you know the right way is to put the e." Uh, off and leave it off of there, is and that's that why what we, we did it. USC people sound like. Well, he, here's the deal. I went to UCLA for seven long years, undergrad <laughs> and you, and law school. And Connor, the fact that you went to USC law mm-hmm, school, mm-hmm. I I tried to be mature about it. Right. I, I rooted for the Trojans mm-hmm, and so on. Mm-hmm. But there's still a little residual loyalty to Nothing UCLA. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So that maybe that healthy why, tribalism. Maybe that's why I'm making them sound like a cross between uh, Gomer Pyle. And the slack jawed yokel from yeah. The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah and the, <laughs> exactly right. So I'm just saying, why not sneak in there? Maybe the UCLA folks can add the asterisk uh, if USC r- refuses to do it. So uh, this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, uh, the nation has been roiled by controversy over Donald Trump's inexplicable refusal or failure to. Just come out and say, I hate hate groups, KKK equals bad, let's move on to, let's make America great again. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, there's been all this reaction, we're, we're seeing a lot of statues being torn down, we're seeing statues being brought down in, in a gentlemanly fashion after a vote by the city council and so on. Why don't we start at the beginning, and Connor, I'd be interested in your thought. Do you think there was a method to Trump's madness that he's playing to his base in a clever way, looking ahead to the reelection, and he's saying to himself, I know I'm going to come across as kind of a racist and a pro-Nazi guy to some of the elites who live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, but doggone it, I don't care about those votes. I'm losing those votes. i got to make sure my base sticks with me. And so I'm going to say, well, there were good people on <laughs> both sides of the riot there in Charlottesville. Yeah, no. Do you think it was just stupid of him, or do you think it was by design that he refused, as he did in the campaign, 
understand when somebody said, well, what about David Duke endorsing you? He's a KKK guy. He's a white supremacist. And, and Trump said something along the lines of, white su- supremacist? Supre- what, what do you me? I don't know what you, I'm not going to disavow. Even, what's race? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. I can't disavow people if I don't know stuff about him. So I think it was calculated. And let's face it. Whatever he did worked. It so worked. He, he's Absolutely. in the White House. No, well, so this, what do you think was, about this latest? Thing? This was not so. So Trump does certainly engage in calculated political moves. You. I mean, Look at Arpaio's pardon coming down the pike. That is absolutely politically motiv- motivated. This was, I think, a representative of his psyche, his psychological problem, which is, as you've pointed out previously on this show, in fact, everything is about Trump and himself personally. So that even if somebody is a hateful racist, KKK, a white supremacist, if his sense is that they at the like end of the day him. they'd rather vote for a Donald Trump yeah, than a Hillary Clinton, exactly. he somehow refuses I to come to, out and, and say the obvious, namely, yeah. these people are monsters? Exactly. He has this bizarre backwards sense that not that he represents the interests of the people, but that the people who like him he must represent the interests of. He must decide these people are Trumpites. They are on my side. Right. They're in my tribe. And as a result of the fact that they like me, I have to find a way to equivocate and sort of weasel out of criticizing them in a direct way because that's simply where he comes from. I mean, a business background, in a sense, in the same way that a legal background sometimes when you're thinking like an advocate, you've got to take the side that you're on regardless. And when you're in, on a negotiating, you know, in a negotiating situation, you've got to take your side and try and find a way to work it and make your side look like the good guys and he's just stuck in that mode and doesn't realize that his, in his position as commander-in-chief he is making statements on behalf of the nation he is representing the interests of so all I guess people one question is is it very stupid if his goal is to get reelected mm-hmm. is it stupid to do this because what it results in is a solidification of his support with his base mm-hmm. let's call it 25 30 percent so mm-hmm. that he continues to just have them in love with him but it alienates not only the Democrats who they're never going to vote for him anyway mm-hmm. but it also threatens to alienate a good chunk of the independents, the moderates, mm-hmm. the folks at the centrist or left edge of the Republican Party to the point where he'll be able to, unable to recreate his magic when he runs yeah, for re-election. I know absolutely it's a negative, it's a net negative. But this tactic by Trump is, I think, a net positive for him politically. The fact that he does this in every single scenario means that on the whole, most of the time, he's defending people who do make up his base and defending people in a way that um, attracts his base and his base says, yeah, I'm not standing up for, you know, I'm, I'm standing up against PC culture and, you know, the left's liberal uh, probing into our lives and messing with us and judge being judgmental o- overall. If he stands up to liberal judgmentalism in every scenario, most of the time that's politically and expedient and correct for him. This time he chose to do it on behalf of Nazis who killed someone. So obviously it's going to be a massive backfire, but he doesn't have the judgment to say, this time I'm backing off. He just has a strategy and he applies it. All right, so let, let's turn to the issue about statues. Uh, it, it, the controversy has focused uh, our attention on the fact that there are hundreds of statues, who knows, maybe thousands, I don't know, around the nation, and they are of guys who were all about protecting slavery. Mm-hmm. And we are learning from historians and reporters that a lot of those statues were put up uh, to kind of say F you to the North and the non-slavery fans 10, 30, 50, 70 years after the Civil exactly. War. Exactly. Now, so do you think as a millennial, Connor Oaks, <laughs> that it's a good idea to be tearing down all these statues of Robert E. Lee and other folks who were partial to the South in the Civil War? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't think a a blanket removal of all statues from the past because people from the past had bad, worse, or different morals than than we is a good idea. But I think a selective reevaluation of the symbols that people use to represent governmental power and society as as a whole is a very good thing. I think we need to take a look step by step, incident by incident, one at a time and say, this guy did not do anything positive that outweighed his massively negative crimes against well, humanity. Well, folks, you've heard Connor's view. When we come back, you're going to hear the real truth Uh-oh. about why this is a big win for Donald Trump. Net it out, my prediction is 
huge victory for Donald. Here on the Royal Oak Show, stick with us. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Experience your home away from home, being beachfront at the Kanapali Beach Hotel. Begin your getaway, relaxing on over 11 acres of tropical Hawaiian gardens at Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel. Voted Best Aloha Spirit by Hawaii Magazine readers. Just walking around the grounds with all the tropical vegetation, relaxing poolside, or kicking back in the sun on the world-renowned Kanapali Beach makes you feel like you're home in paradise. There's a package to fit all your needs. Wedding, honeymoon, activities, private parties, great food, or just good old beach fun. The hotel perpetuates the Hawaiian tradition at its best. Call 661-0011 or visit kbhmaui.com. Hey, Lorraine, do you realize that your mother, my mother-in-law, Chef Maria, has been serving Las Vegas since 1949? Yes, I do, Dennis. That's when she first met Howard Hughes, who fell in love with her cooking. And in 1955, she opened her first restaurant on Fremont Street. Yes, dear. And another great customer was Liberace. Wow. Then in 1962, while Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were causing global excitement on the Las Vegas Strip, your family opened their second restaurant. And in 1960, 72, Elvis Presley began electrifying Las Vegas audiences and eating in our restaurants. You know, Lorraine, this is quite a town. There's only one Las Vegas. And there's only one bootlegger Italian bistro. Folks, when you're in Las Vegas, come visit us. We'll make you feel like you're part of our family. The bootlegger Italian bistro, conveniently located at 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard, South Strip. Visit our website at www.bootleggerlasvegas.com. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 1-800-915-2644. Welcome back. To the Royal Oaks Show with co-host Connor Oaks and engineer Jose. All right, we got our uh, trivia quiz here for you, music quiz. You know the name of this song, I uh, don't. Connor Oaks? I got to admit, this one's beyond me. Heard it through the grapevine. Right, through the grapevine. Now, well, you, you didn't see The Big Chill, the, the incredible movie, The Big I Chill? I did see The Big Chill okay. many years ago. All right, so this is you should see it again because uh, Heard It Through the Grapevine, mm-hmm. big, big part of that. Uh, Marvin Gaye was mm-hmm. the singer, mm-hmm. and uh, of course there was the very cruel joke from uh, several years ago. Marvin Gaye, uh, amazing singer, huge success, and uh, he met a bad end. His dad uh, actually shot him in dead. Really? So, yes, exactly right. So the joke was circulated. Uh, um, uh, the joke was you know, Marvin Gaye Senior's greatest hits were the the two oh, the two God. Yeah, yeah shots. Poor yeah. guy. Yeah, but you know it's not too soon. It's been so many years. It's so I, always going to be too soon for that joke. I think we think we can talk about that. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about the statue controversy, and I promised uh, when we broke a few minutes ago, I was going to explain why it's actually a big win for Donald Trump. So. He starts out, and he does something really stupid. Trump basically can't bring himself to say hate groups are bad, right? Negative, but he's talking about it. He's getting beaten up left and right. But this has morphed because of the let's tear down the statue business into an opportunity 
for Trump to reach out to people, maybe even beyond his base. Now, the New York Times the other day quoted Paul Begala, the Democratic strategist, as saying that Trump is actually winning here. He said that the Democrats are driving straight into a trap that Trump has set, according to Begala, because the president seeks to shift the focus away from the comments he made about white supremacists Mm -hmm. to all the talk about the, the statues and so on. In a way, Paul Begala is right, but I, I think he's right for a, a more specific reason, and here it is. Trump stumbled onto a line that resonated with mm-hmm. people. What are we going to do? Tear down the statues of George Washington because yep. he owned slaves? Now, this is kind of a subtle intellectual ideological battle that's mm-hmm. going on about the statues. And you recall people are talking about, well, maybe we should put them in museums instead. And, you know, let's look more closely into the background. Trump cuts right through all of that crap. You know, let's not spend too much time thinking about it. Let's, is like the hat, make America great again. Right. He must have said it a thousand times in the campaign, and it worked. And I think for him to focus on something as simplistic, but it's got this kernel of truth to it, what mm-hmm. are we going to do? Thomas Jefferson owns slaves, too. Are we going to tear up the, the $2 bill? I don't know if you know that Thomas Jefferson is on the $2 bill. I've seen it. Are we going to tear up the $1 bill and take the statues down? So I think in that sense, he he has succeeded. Now, th- the other angle here is that this is all about a battle for the hearts and minds of the people who moved away from Hillary Clinton and instead somehow brought themselves to vote for Donald Trump. The people in Michigan and in Pennsylvania, the Rust Belt folks, it was shocking because in the last six presidential elections, if you totaled up all of the electoral votes that the Democrats won every single election before 2016 and added up the votes that the Republicans won every single time for six straight elections, it was like 260 for Hillary and, you know, 150 for Trump. All she needed was one or two little states here or there. There's no mm-hmm. way she could lose. Mm-hmm. And yet he somehow broke through that coalition. Mm-hmm. And I think this kind of reaction that, that he's able to seize the, the moment and, and move it from a stupid mistake about the KKK to actually reaching out to people, I think it's going to be a net plus for it, him. It was a fantastic political mover maneuver to say, well, who, what are we going to do next? Tear down a statue of Thomas Jefferson? Because everyone knows that we have this existential you know, angst in America over the fact that we come from, like everybody, come from a nation founded and created by people who had good ba- uh, sides and bad sides, people who ha- owned slaves and uh, not to name names, but Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings uh, raped and killed people. Uh, this I is, think you just named names. I sure did. You just called out Thomas should, Jefferson. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't mean it. So the the, the, the problem is, um, well, fundamentally with the idea of the problem is that, that Trump is busting out a slippery slope argument that could be fallacious. If you look at it and ask, well, hold on, how slippery is this slope? Or – can we actually put the brakes on it, evaluate the, the contributions to American history, the, 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 the Continental Congress full of geniuses who came together and decided how to, how to build our founding documents? These guys made serious positive contributions to the country. Can we differentiate between them, for whom we've got the Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial, and Robert E. Lee, whose major accomplishment was killing Northerners in order to further narrative that slavery was okay well that's that's one way to look at it i think trump is reaching out to uh, the great unwashed though when we come back uh, we're going to explain how sometimes trump's getting help from an unusual source and the espn sports network is actually giving him a big boost on this controversy stay with us we'll, we'll be back. back on crn with the royal oak show you're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T. 
the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's drsheps.com, 310-873-4422. Traditional Hawaiian weddings and vow renewals to your own unique ceremony, find out why Ka'anapali Weddings is the perfect place to say, I do. Create the memory that will last a lifetime at the place you and your family know and love, Ka'anapali Beach Hotel. Imagine yourself and your loved one just steps away from world-famous Ka'anapali Beach in one of many wedding venues to choose from, including oceanside lawns, tropical gardens, or indoor banquet rooms. With your choice of catering, bar, floral, and musical options, you can make your special day customized just for you. Their wedding specialists will help you plan your dream wedding today. For more information, visit Ka'anapaliweddings.com or call 661-0011. Ka'anapali Weddings, the perfect place to say, I do. Ka'anapali Beach Hotel, Maui's Hawaiian Hotel. Hey there, did you know that with a bachelor's degree, on average, you could make almost twice as much over a lifetime than a person with just a high school diploma? It's true. According to the 2012 U.S. Census Bureau, college grads with a bachelor's degree make almost twice as much as high school grads. Now, going back to school is easier than ever at Independence University. Log on and complete coursework from the park or the beach or even your couch watching the kids. And Independence University gives you the tools, a free tablet and laptop for undergrad students to use and keep when they graduate. That's right. Get a laptop so you can go to college from anywhere. Take the first step to a new career in business, information technology, healthcare, or graphic arts. Call to find the online degree program that's right for you. And you could be on your way to increasing your earning potential. 800-989-1361 800-989-1361 That's 800-989-1361. CRN listeners, when you come to Southern California, stop by a great restaurant, the Dresden Restaurant at 1760 North Vermont Avenue in Hollywood. Enjoy great entertainment, like the music of the legendary Marty and Elaine at the world-famous Dresden Restaurant. The Dresden was a location for the making of the movie Swingers. Now you can swing with stars Marty and Elaine. Plus, enjoy great food, too, like French onion soup, artichoke hearts, and many other great appetizers. Seafood? There's salmon, shrimp scampi, New Zealand orange roughy, halibut, Lake Superior whitefish, and specialties like veal marsala piccata and parmigiana. Plus, we've got a great roast rack of lamb, chicken piccata, and cordon bleu, and pasta dishes, too. Steaks? Filet. New York. Chateaubriand for two. Much more, too, including pork chops, prime rib of beef, and an incredibly extra large cut of prime rib. It's the Dresden Restaurant, open for lunch Monday through Saturday and dinner Monday through Sunday. Check us out at 1760 North Vermont Avenue or call 323-665-4294. When are you gonna come down? When are you going to laugh? I should have stayed on the phone. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show. Uh, one of the most successful, best, most prolific singers in the history of rock and roll we're listening to. So uh, Connor Oaks, my co-host today, is on the spot. He's going to be asked to identify the uh, the singer here. Uh, who are you listening Gar to? Garfunkel and Oates. I have no idea. Oh, my I have no gosh. Clue. You know, that's got to be the worst guess <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. Garfunkel and Oates. Let's back up a, a minute, Connor. You know, I'm Garfunkel aware that Simon is part Garfunkel of Simon and Garfunkel. Okay. Yes. Oh, so so it was it's just a joke. joke. It was a little it was joke. A joke. Okay. Because I have no idea. Who okay. That was. Let me ask you: Have you ever heard the name Elton John? <laughs> nope. 
Oh my goodness! You're 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 joking. Again, I'm no. Joking, okay, yes. okay. So that was Elton John. Yeah. I gotta say, Ken Jeffries last week is you're doing a little better than you on on. Yeah. Well, if you'd busted out Tiny music. Dancer, I would have been singing along. But that one, I don't. Yeah. Know. Well, this this one was a little different. Say, uh, we're talking about statues, ladies and gentlemen. Should we be uh, tearing them down, blowing them up? I'm a little <laughs> curious about this uh, city of Charlottesville, Virginia statue of the Confederate General General Robert E. Lee. I'm looking at the picture. They've covered it up in plastic. I yeah. would assume that would be for its protection, but at the same time, maybe, I mean, people well, are Aren't they going to get rid of it, though? I yeah. thought they decided that, well, why not just blow it up or, or tear it down? <laughs> why cover things, it in in the plastic? These things take time. City government doesn't move fast. So they're not going to melt it down in place. I guess. But, I mean, the, it makes it seem like, you know, it's a, it's an obscenity. But I guess that's essentially that's what people the are idea. saying. All right, so uh, in New York, uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio has not rem- uh, ruled out getting rid of Manhattan's 76-foot Columbus Circle monument as the city reviews what he calls symbols of hate. Mm-hmm. So this Columbus Circle monument may be on the chopping block. Uh, Philadelphia has placed barricades and guards around a statue of uh, their former Mayor Rizzo, who is loathed by some African Americans. And I'd forgotten what this guy did, but it seems like he did have uh, he they he did deserve to be loathed. Mm-hmm. They uh, the New York Times says that uh, Mr. Rizzo, who died back in 1991, he cultivated a law and order image as a police commissioner that included raiding gay clubs and once forcing Black Panthers to strip naked okay. in the street. All right. Yeah, so I can see how people might want to tear down his statue. How and these people get statues to begin with? Why can't they put up two statues of Rocky in yeah, Philadelphia? Yeah, actually, that and, would be and, great. And, and zero of, of mm-hmm. Rizzo. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Boston, uh, there are calls for renaming historic Faneuil Hall, because <laughs> who knew... Uh, unless you're some kind of history nerd, Peter Faneuil, okay, he donated the building to the city in 1743, so it's been Faneuil Hall ever since he was a slave owner and trader. So mm-hmm. I guess they're going to take that down, too. Mm-hmm. Now, Columbus, the New York Times points out, who most Americans rather innocently learn that in 1492 he sailed the ocean blue until he discovered the New World. Columbus has undergone a rather negative uh, revisionist treatment in recent decades because of his impact on native peoples. Now, I w- was always thinking in recent years, well, yes, we're learning that he wasn't a perfect person, but you know, maybe he was just a product of his uh, backward uh, European time. But you were saying off the air, Connor, there are actually some uh, perhaps serious reasons to uh, he's an sanitize the culture for, of uh, Columbus he's stuff. He's an, essenti- an especially bad example of uh, his time and place. It, first of all, judging people by their the, the morals of their time and place is inherently flawed by assuming that the morals of the time and place are coming from only those in power. So yeah, the white European men who were who were sailing around the world and killing everyone they encountered, they had a certain morality. But the people being killed and enslaved back there back then certainly understood at that point in time that it was morally wrong to be killed or enslaved or to kill or enslave. So it, the the morality of the time is really the morality of those in power at the time writing the history books at the time. And anyway, Columbus cannot be credited with an impressive accomplishment the way the 19... He did discover the New World, He sure didn't. He was not Uh the first European to arrive. There were Nordic... Leif Erikson? Yeah, there were Nordic people who'd already crossed the Atlantic. At his... At Columbus's time in history, in 14-whatever, when he set out, he was completely ignorant of the fact... Well, he had been told repeatedly, but he was... personally was opposed to science. He was a, I, I would say, globe like globe denier in yeah. that he knew the world was round, but he just thought everyone's math was wrong. He thought, oh, I'll, I know better than all the scientists who have estimated the s- circumference of the Earth to within a couple of tens of miles by measuring shadows at different latitudes and comparing the two of them. I think they're, they're all wrong in the math. So he I thought he was going to hit India. Yeah, I'm going to get all the way to India. So he sets off with two and a half, basically, ships and way too few supplies to make it. And lo and behold, lucky for him, he stumbles upon a relatively, compared to Europe, uninhabited, but not uninhabited at all continent, truly the West Indies, the Bahamas, basically, shows up and decides, well, I'll just kill everyone I meet 
until I find gold that they basically didn't have. So you have. think the Columbus Circle should be pretty much uh, b- blown say, up there in so Manhattan. So Columbus as the myth that turned into Columbus Day was right. the, the result of a fiction writer, actually, in the early 1900s who needed a m- new American heroes. And, and the Mayor de Blasio in New York, I believe, wants to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, they might need a little bit more recognition. As uh, one famous comedian said, uh, when was the last time you saw two Indians at the same time? <laughs> You know, uh, not everybody, though, on the left even agrees with this sanitizing history idea, Connor. For example, Andrew Young, he's the former Atlanta mayor and civil rights icon, has argued against calls to remove the enormous carved tablets of Confederate leaders on Stone Mountain, Georgia, and Mm -hmm. other Confederate monuments. And his argument is these disputes make more enemies than friends and distract from more substantive issues. He said, I personally think that we made a mistake in fighting over the Confederate flag here in Georgia. I'm always interested in substance over symbols. They're also getting some crap in Maryland because apparently the uh, General Assembly in Maryland is going to change the lyrics from uh, to the state song. The current state song is Maryland, My Maryland. Uh, it's a 19th century ditty that calls on Maryland to join the Confederacy. Oh, so, good Lord. so that's going to be changing. <laughs> that's going to be changing as well. Uh, we promised, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, explain to you wh- how ESPN is actually helping Donald Trump on this controversy. And when we come back, we are going to do exactly that. Uh, it, it might be the biggest blow in favor of Donald Trump on this whole uh, let's blow up the monuments, let's sanitize history. Uh, and it ca- came from a very unusual source, ESPN Sports. When we come back, I'm going to explain all that to you here on the Royal Oak Show. Stay with us. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. When you really want Italian food, you've got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Seekers of luscious and appetizing gustatorial pursuits indulge your fancies with steaks so absolutely yum-yum. Vegetarians have forsaken kale and pilates and never look back. Fish specialties so fresh and delicious and chosen by King Neptune himself and relish Columbus Italian family specialties. So delectable you'll be yelling out, bravo, bravo. And let's not forget Columbus world famous meatballs and you've got to try their breakfast pizza. Mm. Oh, and jazz every night. Service that's friendly, not falling and at a price that'll keep you coming back. That's Columbo's, that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Columbo's Manja. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Connor Oaks of the law firm of Nemesek and Cole. So one more challenge coming your way, Connor. Uh, Patsy you Klein. To, you happen, no, it's not Patsy uh, Klein. Abba. You know that wasn't. Okay. All right. So that was Abba. Right. And now you got to tell us the name of the song Waterloo. that we were singing. Very good. It, you kind of cheated because you listened to the song. No, sing. it didn't get to that part yet. They I, didn't I, say Waterloo. Uh, Engineer Jose, didn't, didn't they, didn't out, they Jose, say? Help me out. Didn't they say Waterloo as part of, I, I can't really <laughs> he won't remember. He not take sides, but. Yeah. 
the uh, <laughs> the song uh, was great. The, the Mamma Mia, a fabulous movie. That's uh, not true. Pierce but Brosnan. Sure. The song you know, I think he that got came out of his that voice. Why in the world they wouldn't let him lip sync and have a real singer? Bad. Yeah, I mean, people complained about better than I. People about Ryan Gosling and La La mm-hmm, Land. Mm-hmm. I mean, he actually. I, I saw a video of him when he was a little kid. You know, he was you know the stage mom, and he was mm-hmm, show business when mm-hmm. he was six and seven. He was dancing and he was singing. His voice isn't bad. I mean, for it to be showcased as the voice along with Emma Stone's yeah. in the movie of the year, mm-hmm. it, it was a little odd. Mm-hmm. But poor Pierce Brosnan. But he has many gifts uh, apart from nobody's singing. got fifty two cards. But I mean, Meryl Streep. I mean, everybody's complaining. about about the the movie, I, I loved it. For her to to pull that off, mm-hmm. I mean, anybody can do uh, uh, Sophie's Choice, you know. But to pull off the, the what Meryl Streep did in Mamma Mia, yeah. that was quite something. Right. You know, the interesting factoid about those folks, uh, Abba, they don't they didn't know a word of English. Mm-hmm. It I was all it was they were all Swedish, and so they'd come in and somebody <laughs> would give them a uh, a phonetic version of Waterloo and Mamma Mia, and so mm-hmm. on. Pretty swell. So, folks, we're talking about the idea of uh, tearing those Confederate statues down. And I, my point was Donald Trump is rather brilliantly boiled down. It's, it's another make America great uh, again uh, hat moment. He, he said, hey, what are we going to do? Tear down statues of George Washington because he owned slaves? And he cut through all of the intellectual debate and boiled it down in a way that, that I think is appealing to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Another thing that happened last week that I think helped him in the debate Absolutely. is ESPN's decision to pull its football announcer, Robert Lee, he didn't have the middle initial E, but it was close enough. Robert Lee off of an upcoming college football broadcast. It was a big game, the Virginia versus William and Mary game. You know, it's steeped in the South. It was at the height of this controversy about be- people being infuriated about these symbols of, of racism and slavery and so on. But to pull an Asian football announcer who's working his way up and trying to make a name for himself in the mm-hmm. football announcing field, yeah. he's landed wow. this important gig of the Virginia versus William and Mary game. And for ESPN to say, oh, we don't want to make people uncomfortable by having a, a football announcer named Robert Lee. So they replaced him with, you know, Wilbur Schmedlap and they demoted him to some, you know, double A football football deal. Connor Oaks, so you can't you can't be approving As of the, the ESPN resident, decision, right? Resident uh, ultra liberal millennial punching bag in this <sighs> studio. I have I literally thought that was Engineer Jose's job. <laughs> okay. I have literally no defense for this action. I don't understand it. Now I can see sitting back in my lazy boy, kicking out my feet, and watching some good old fashioned Southern college football, and. Looking up at the screen and seeing at the bottom, announcer Robert Lee, and thinking to myself, oh, that's interestingly topical and kind would, of Wouldn't ironic. inflict emotional distress on you? But I'm because, not Because of your hatred for that. slavery? No. I would say uh, I might make the connection, but all I need is the headshot of the Asian-American Robert Lee for one second on the announcer's desk, and I'm, I'm, it might elicit a chuckle. I mean, that's a joke I might make with, with my co-caster if I were casting this sports casting this game. But to pull him from the game, I, yeah. I don't understand. There's a website if you're into foot college football, maybe you know about this. It's called Outkick the Coverage, <clears throat> and so uh, they had a reporter Clay That's Travis. That's a very clever name, actually. Yeah, so Clay Travis is reporting that Lee has been moved to the Youngstown State at Pittsburgh game, where he's not going to run the risk of hurting anybody's feelings. Uh, a guy named Dave Weekly, actually, it wasn't Wilbur Schmedlap. It was Dave Weekly uh, who is actually going to be the wait, announcer. Wait, wait, what about the fact that? General Meade weekly encountered the Confederate troops at Gettysburg. Oh, wait, he if, won. O- if only you had been at ESPN. So this, the fellow uh, Clay Travis, he writes, uh, let's get uh, one thing straight here. If you're honestly so offended by the mere whisper of anything that could possibly remind you of anything that so much as sounds Confederate in uh, nature, you may get your panties in a twist by this dude announcing your Saturday afternoon sports entertainment. Uh, if that bothers you, he says, go uh, jump off a cliff, just get a good run. 
running start, aim for the moon because you're <laughs> taking oxygen from the rest of us. So the bottom wow. line is this was a subject of ridicule. So oh, sure. the people who has sincerely said this is an opportunity for us to take a stand against slavery uh, and all these symbols of hate, when ESPN does something as stupid as this, yeah. it just gives them an opportunity to say, you know, they're reducing it to absurdity. So Absolutely. It just fuels the opposition who gets to say this is liberal overreach and they're going crazy and they're being hysterical and these social issues don't matter. Let's get back to what we really want to talk about, change the subject. And it's just unfortunate. So President Trump uh, perhaps had a really bad week and then he had sort of a comeback period. When we come back, we're going to talk about whether in spite of the ups or down and downs, bottom line is Donald Trump is utterly squandering his opportunity. A historic opportunity with both houses of Congress on his side. He runs the executive branch. He's got the 5-4 vote on the Supreme Court. And yet, what has he accomplished? Well, he totally screwed up on repeal and replace Obamacare. Hmm, I don't see any tax reform or infrastructure progress. So basically, he's blowing it. We're going to talk a little bit about this when we get back on The Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with The Royal Oak Show. Experience a luxury boutique hotel escape in the heart of Laguna Beach, California, with the finest art gallery, shopping, dining, and nightlife just steps from your door. The heart of Laguna Beach, the edge of the sea. It's the Inn at Laguna Beach. Enjoy our comfortable rooms, blending the style of a timeless beach bungalow with the modern comforts of today. 70 newly appointed guest rooms and suites await you at the Inn at Laguna Beach. Then, relax at the rooftop bar, where you'll indulge in breathtaking views of the ocean. For dining, you'll find libations and local cuisine on the California coastline, including dining at the legendary Las Brisas, a Southern California landmark. The Inn at Laguna Beach, footsteps from room to village to sea, located in the heart of Laguna Beach. The Inn is within walking distance of all that Laguna Beach has to offer. No car required. The Inn at Laguna Beach, 211 North Coast Highway in Laguna Beach, California. Call 800-544-4479 or visit innatlagunabeach.com. If you're eligible for Medicare, you need to know there is money available to you that can lower your Medicare prescription costs. How much can you save? Find out now by making a free call to Health Markets. They'll search from a variety of nationally recognized plans to find you the right coverage at a price that fits your budget. And they'll do all this valuable research for you at no charge to you. And remember, you may be able to save money on your prescriptions. We'll tell you if you qualify. Why pay a penny more than you have to for an insurance policy? Let us find you the right plan at the right price and see if you qualify to lower your prescription costs. Put our free service to work for you at no charge. Call Health Markets right now. 800-990-0351. 800-990-0351. 800-990-0351. That's 800-990-0351. Health Markets Insurance Agency is the DBA of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc. Licensed in all 50 states and D.C. Service and product availability varies by state. Agents may be compensated based on your enrollment. See our and listeners, when you come to Southern California, stop by a great restaurant, the Dresden Restaurant at 1760 North Vermont Avenue in Hollywood. Enjoy great entertainment, like the music of the legendary Marty and Elaine at the world-famous Dresden Restaurant. The Dresden was a location for the making of the movie Swingers. Now you can swing with stars Marty and Elaine. Plus, enjoy great food, too, like French onion soup, artichoke hearts, and many other great appetizers. Seafood? There's salmon, shrimp scampi, New Zealand orange roughy, halibut, Lake Superior whitefish, and specialties like veal marsala piccata and parmigiana. Plus, we've got a great roast rack of lamb, chicken piccata, and cordon bleu, and pasta dishes, too. Steaks? Filet. New York. Chateaubriand for two. Much more, too, including pork chops, prime rib of beef, and an incredibly extra large cut of prime rib. It's the Dresden Restaurant, open for lunch Monday through Saturday and dinner Monday through Sunday. Check us out at 1760 North Vermont Avenue or call 323-665-4294. Welcome back. This is the Royal Oak Show, and we're testing Connor Oak's trivia abilities. That thing you do. That thing you do. Exactly right. The Tom Hanks movie. Classic. You you got it right. Absolutely. So uh, we're talking about how Trump has kind of blown it here. Um, The head of the Senate, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, is somebody he's got to work with to accomplish his goals. So what does Trump do? 
he just goes on a, a Twitter rampage against the guy. And it's got to be awkward, Connor, mm -hmm. because McConnell's wife is in the cabinet. Yeah. What are those cabinet meetings like? Tense. The president calls him to order. Well, uh, let's see, Ms. Chow, how are things at home with your husband? I mean, it, just insane. Yeah. Uh, is there any excuse, no, for, him, no excuse. For, for him doing this? Compare this to the monumental effort that Obama made in 08 and 09 and 2010 to try and get Obamacare pushed through and right. actually created. He made all these stump speeches and all his major addresses to the nation centered and, and turned back on themselves to talk about health care and make sure the American people knew how important this was to him. Now, this is the primary goal of his administration was to pass this landmark legislation and and then he pushed on Congress and yeah, said, no, you're right. now is he the got time. it done, do it. and Trump is squandering it. Which reminds me, the mm -hmm. anthem of the Royal Oak Show is an original song sung by Grace Corcunas, an amazing singer. You can make your judgment on that yourself in just a moment. This is The Squanderer, and it's, the, uh, it's our comment on what it is that Trump is doing, basically blowing it. Jose? I'm the kind of guy who likes to fire. I'll zing him with a tweet and kick him out of town But when they start to tell me how a bill becomes a law Instead I've got a game plan, poke the press right in the jaw They call me the squanderer, yeah the squanderer I tweet around, 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 around and oh. My homies run the senate, my bros control the house I'm up if I forward SCOTUS, let Bernie call me louse don't tell me about my legacy, I'm watching cable news I've got important tweets to tweet, morning Joe's IQ is due Cause I'm the squanderer, yeah the squanderer I flip around, 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 around Well Johnson was real puffed up Had his great society FDR had his new deal It's been the 80 years of talk about his state Obamacare But as for counting votes I have you gotta care My mind starts to wander I reach for my phone I'm talking to my base There a Congress free zone Yeah, I'm the squanderer Yeah, the squanderer I flip around, 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 around Grace Corkinus with The Squanderer. That's Lyrics our, by Royal Oaks. Well, thank you. Those, those are our comments. You know, uh, it's amazing. Trump, according to the New York Times, criticized Mitch McConnell publicly, berated him in a phone call that quickly devolved into a profane shouting match. These guys are on the same side. Uh, poor Mrs. Chow. She was deflecting a question from a reporter about tensions between her husband and the president. She, served, she told reporters, I stand by my man. Both of them. <laughs> so uh, you know, oh, I don't know. I don't know true. how Trump. From from a conservative standpoint, you could say, well, if he gets nothing done at all, at least he stopped the pendulum moving left. Another eight years of Hillary and Obama, and yet, other than Supreme Court decisions, so uh, we may not get much of anything out of Donald Trump. Well, you may get a transgender military ban for no good reason that no one in the world wants. Oh, okay. So, so we got that going. Yeah, for us. awesome. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, listening to the Royal Oaks Show once again, and thanks to you, Connor Oaks, for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule. It was great. Connor to Oaks, Nemesek, and Cole here in Los Angeles for all your legal needs. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us next week. We're going to have another edition of the Royal Oak Show. Which was most important because that was your theme. Are you tired of hearing your favorite talk radio show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio's six channels of high definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in CRN HD. The difference is amazing. Catch your favorite political hosts like Dennis Prager, Tom Hartman, Barry Farber, and so many more. Entertainment and lifestyle programming like the Robert Conrad Show, the What's Cooking Show, and the What's Cooking on Wine Show, all in true CRN HD audio. 
sports, business, travel, food, wine, politics. There is something for everyone, and it's all available in CRN High Definition Sound. Log on to www.CRN Talk for listings and information on all your favorite shows. That's www.CRNTalk.com. The Radio Channel. It's time now for the Polka Party. This is Dick Sinclair. Welcome to the program, and away we go. (laughs) 